Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the burn management in the skin anatomy. But first, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. A burn is the damage that happens after something really hot like the fire, hot water or stream, or even a hot object comes into contact with the skin. But burn injuries can also be caused by extreme cold, electricity, some chemicals like strong acids, or radiation like from the sun or medical treatments. Ultimately, burns cause damage and inflammation of the skin. The skin, on the other hand, plays an important role in protecting underlying muscles, bones, ligaments, and internal organs forming a barrier to infectious pathogens and preventing water loss from the body. Now, the skin is divided into three layers. These are the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. The epidermis forms the thin outermost layer of the skin and it is made up of several layers of the keratonite which makes and secretes glycolipids which helps to prevent water from easily seeping into and out of the body. Underneath the epidermis is the thicker dermis layer that contains the nerves and blood vessels. The dermis is divided actually into two layers, which are the thin papillary layer just below the epidermis and a deeper reticular layer. The papillary layer contains fibroblasts which produce a connective tissue that is called collagen. The fibroblasts are arranged in a finger-like projections called the papillae, each of which contains blood vessels and nerve endings. The nerve endings found in this layer sense pain and fine touch which allows you to feel something like a feather touching your arm so this is the one meanwhile the reticular layer of the dermis is even thicker than the papillary layer the collagen in the reticular layer is packed with very tightly together making it excellent tissue support in addition the fibroblast in the reticular layer secrete elastin which is a stretchy protein that gives skin its flexibility in the reticular layer it is also contains the skin's accessory structures like the oil, sweat glands, hair follicles, lymphatic vessels, and nerves, and all of the blood vessels that serve these tissues. A type of nerve ending found here detects pressure and vibration, which allows you to feel someone grabbing your arm. Finally, just below the reticular layer is the hypodermis. It is made up of fat and connective tissues that insulate and pad the deeper tissue and anchor the skin to the underlying muscle. When the skin is burned, it damages cells and the protein within them. And the number of skin layers affected determines the burn degree. So in the first degree burns, or called the superficial burns, the burn is affecting the epidermis. Meanwhile, in the second degree burns, the burns affect the epidermis and the dermis. If only the papillary layer is burned, it is considered a second degree superficial partial thickness burn. But if the burn reaches the deeper reticular layer and it doesn't extend through the entire layer, then it is considered as the second degree deep partial thickness burn. So the first degree burn, it's superficial up until here only. Meanwhile, for the second degree burns, we have the superficial partial thickness burn and it's in this part, in the papillary layer only. However, if the burn reaches the reticular layer, it is considered as the deep partial thickness burn. In the third degree burn, or also called the full thickness burns, the entire epidermis and the dermis are affected. And finally, for the fourth degree burns, the burn extends into the hypodermis. So you can see in this part. When the skin is burned and it affects already the epidermis and the dermis, it is considered as third degree burn. However, if the burn extends until the hypodermis, that is considered as fourth degree burn. Always remember that when the skin is burned, the cells and proteins are damage. Let's proceed to the burn complications. When the skin layer is affected, it means that the skin cannot function effectively. Thus, the common complications are infections, especially from Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and water loss through damaged skin. As burns heal, the macrophages move into the skin to remove dead cells and fibroblasts 
create new collagen to heal the damaged skin. The more extensive the area with no collagen, the more extensive the scar. So scars are common in second degree deep partial thickness burns and third and even in fourth degree burns. Symptoms of a burn depend on the degree of burns. In the first degree burns, the affected area becomes red, dry, and painful. These areas are also tend to blanch as blood flow is restricted with compression. In the second degree burn, superficial partial thickness burns can be red with clear blisters, wet as if they are whipping, and are even more painful than the first degree burns but still with blanch. In the second degree dip, partial thickness burn may vary in color from yellow or white to red. They have blisters and can be wet or dry. Because of the damage to the blood vessels and nerve endings, burns of this degree may not blanch and there may only be pain due to pressure because of the nerve damage. A third degree burn can appear waxy white to leathery gray or black and these third degree burns are dry. Again, Blanching doesn't occur and the pain may only feel like deep pressure or in other words, they can be relatively painless. Additionally, the elastin damage causes burn to be stiff or inelastic. Finally, the fourth degree burns are charred black, dry, have pain only from the deep pressure but can be painless from complete destructions of the nerve endings and have patches of dead skin. Having said that, the margins of all burns often have lots of damaged nerves endings and that can be painful. The diagnosis of burn is often based on the burn's appearance and the amount or type of pain. But sometimes, tissue biopsies are obtained to accurately determine which layer is affected. In adults, the severity of burn is calculated using the rule of nines. The rule of nines evaluates several distinct sections of the body's total surface area for the presence and degree of burns. 11 of the sections make up 9% of the body surface area. These are the head, the chest, the right arm, the abdomen, front of right leg, left arm, front of left leg, back of left leg, back of right leg, lower back, right arm, and the upper back. The groin accounts for the missing 1% in the total body surface. Remember that the rule of nines is commonly used in adult patients. And for the other methods that is being used in calculating burns, I'm going to present it on the next videos. In general, immediate treatment typically includes preventing further burning, like flushing the burn with cool but not ice-cold running water. After that, it is important to manage pain with pain medications. For minor burns, like first and second degree superficial thickness burns, they can heal on their own over a few days or weeks by keeping them bandaged and clean with soap and water. Sometimes, the use of lotion can prevent drying or the use of topical antibiotics can be also considered. If blisters form, it's best to leave them alone because the intact skin help to prevent infections. For more serious burns, like electrical and chemical burns, or second or third degree burns in the sensitive areas like face, hand, and genitalia, hospitalization in specialized burn centers is often considered and needed. In those situations, it is important to replenish lost fluids and electrolytes to prevent infections with antibiotics. Surgical procedures like skin grafting, excision of dead skin, or amputation, especially in the third or fourth degree burns, may also be needed. The management of burn will be discussed in the next videos. So stay tuned and might as well hit that notification bell so you're going to be updated. So to recap, a burn is an injury. And there is a protein denaturation and cellular damage that occurs in the skin caused by extreme heat or cold, electricity, some chemicals, and even radiation. The degree of burn is determined by whether the epidermis, dermis, or hypodermis are affected, and each degree has specific symptoms. The rule of nines, the cost of the burn, and the location of the burn can help determine the treatments. In general, treatments include minimizing the initial burn, 
and pain management. Minor burns don't typically require treatment beyond keeping the area clean, moist, and bandaged. But for the severe burns, they may require more extensive medical interventions, particularly hospitalization at specialized burn centers to prevent infections and dehydrations. So I guess for the meantime, that is all for the burn management and skin anatomy. So please hit that subscribe button and might as well consider hitting the notification bell so that you're going to be updated on whatever uploads that I'm going to take. If you need some help in nursing examinations, you can check the other videos that I have on this channel. And of course, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.